All right, I just wanted to take a quick second to record my thesis project. It took me about two semesters to be able to complete, and each one of these maps was probably at least about 40 hours worth of work. So I chose to do my thesis on the invasive lionfish here in the Western Atlantic. So this first map is the most complex map, and it's actually the distributive flow map. So as you can see, you can see how the lionfish started off in Miami, have spread as far north as around New Jersey, and can been lately just found as far south as Brazil. However, the data I had was, I believe, as the current is 2010. So this is the first page of the story map. And the purpose of the story map was to educate, I would consider, like the average individual about the actual lionfish invasion. And most people aren't aware of the lionfish invasion. So I chose to start the story map off with what's at stake. So each one of these coordinates is where our local coral reefs are found within the Western Atlantic. From here, I went in to explain as far as what an actual coral is, so that if you weren't aware, you could actually see what a coral is going into the different as those in Thelly when it comes to what makes up the actual coral. But I definitely liked this actual picture of a macro, a macro image of a coral, so I definitely wanted to, to kind of highlight that. And so from here, I really wanted to kind of highlight the actual Indo-Pacific, where the lionfish is from. And I wanted to do this because the lionfish is not a threat in the actual Indo-Pacific. So it was important for me to show the contrast difference between the Indo-Pacific, the actual darker red, is indicating that there's denser coral reef populations within a square kilometer there within the Indo-Pacific. And if I compare that with the actual Western Atlantic, you can see that we only have a very limited amount of coral reef here within the Western Atlantic compared to those from the actual Indo-Pacific area. So going on to explain that in the actual Indo-Pacific, there is natural predators for the lionfish, like large what they call goliath groupers, sharks, different other apex predators also look at the lionfish as predators, where here within the Western Atlantic, they do not. So definitely wanted to highlight that within my actual story map. Also, I wanted to highlight why the lionfish is such a formidable threat. And one of them is because, as you can see with this fish here, can consume about 80% of his own body weight in a single feeding. Not to mention they are rather gluttons, and this lionfish pretty much committed suicide by trying to eat a fish that was too big for his own mouth. So definitely pose a viable threat because most actual marine fish will spend around 50 to sometimes 80% of their juvenile state or their entire life among the coral reef for shelter. So it's important that we take care of these different lionfish. And this actual um, video is actually rather interesting because what it does is it actually highlights how the lionfish actually hunt. And it's unique to most any other predatory fish because the lionfish will hunt in packs, much like the name lion indicates, and will surround a shoal of fish, and each of the lionfish will eat its fill, sometimes even decimating the actual uh, school that they surround it as well. So this map actually gave me a lot of problems, mostly because I was working on the desktop version of the story map maker, or of the map maker called ArcMap. And this had well over 5,000 records. So to be able to move this to an online version of the map became very frustrating until I figured out what I needed to do. I needed to simply break that data out into each corresponding year. So you can see the first lionfish was found just outside of Miami in 1985. And I created these individual links so that the individual who's viewing this story map could see the different icons, can see where the different fish were found as the different years had populated. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of click through these so you can quickly just kind of see how the population has grown of the lionfish just within a few short years. So as you can see, just in a matter of about 10 to 15 years, the lionfish population has significantly increased. And especially back up into 2010 is where you can really start to see the spread of the lionfish kind of going up north and also flying down south as well. And if I skip to the end here to the whole data conglomerate, if you will, you can see all the data um, when it comes to the different population of the actual story map. Sorry, I didn't mean to be kind of moving the mouse so much there. All right. But this 
particular screen proved to be very interactive with the viewers. I did a little survey for kind of just receiving feedback on my story map, and this is actually where a lot of the viewers spent their time, really just kind of diving in deep within the different details. And so continuing with the actual story map, the other benefit or the other, I guess, advantage that the lionfish have is that they're very adaptable. They can, with the global change going on with climate raising in temperature, they can actually go to deeper waters here. So it's just kind of some different information that I kind of wanted to portray within the actual story map as well. And this is what I like. The whole point of this story map was to be able to in educate and inform the regular individual to hopefully inspire them to be able to help contribute to the actual lionfish invasion. So here it's what can you do? There's several different methods and this is where an actual video in Florida is talking about a lionfish derby where a local group is getting together and spearfishing the different lionfish within the actual local uh, kind of Florida reef areas. So from there, it kind of takes it a bit further, a controversial topic, if you will, among scuba divers and other individuals who rely on the natural resources of the reef. They're actually spearing the lionfish, not only to get rid of them, kind of like weeding the garden, but then they're also feeding them to sharks or other apex predators, and this is where I mention it's controversial. But the actual idea behind this is that it's going to create the taste for the actual lionfish, or for the apex predators to eat the lionfish or even recognize them as actual prey. So just kind of wanted to kind of show that. Definitely feel like that's also worth worth mentioning as well. And this is just another video along those same ways how in St. Barts they have also done the same thing as well. They are spearing the lionfish and feeding them to the different apex predators. And then I like this um, perfect storm scenario because National Geographic, and there's a video on this link as well, explains how the lionfish is the actual perfect storm. Meaning, coming at the right time, coming at the right season, coming at the right t climate temperature and change, and they are invading and have massively invaded the Western Atlantic. And last but not least, I kind of end with the actual call to arms, if you will. It's sending everybody to a website where they can actually purchase the lionfish so that us two as humans and restaurants can actually start creating that taste for lionfish so maybe we can order them as well. Thank you for watching.